Hello uh, and welcome. Uh, this is Fiedemaster Master Inkar Johannesson from Iceland. And I'm going to continue and hopefully my ongoing series about uh, pattern recognition. Already done one, which I uh, entered into the, into the video contest. And this will be my second. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder. Uh, about patterns, uh, we have made patterns, tactical patterns, uh, strategical patterns, technique patterns, and end game patterns. Those are the categories that I have uh, kind of defined. And then the first video we had, uh, we had, well, we had uh, an example of all of these, but uh, I had no end game pat patterns last time. So let's see what we have in store for this video that's mate pattern number four which I choose to call uh, Anand's mate uh, and it con uh, consists of a queen x-raying uh, a fianchetta bishop uh, in conjunction with an age file a battery so to say so let's have a look at what we're talking about and I chose to call this uh, Anand's mate because this position occurred uh, probably less than a week ago in the game between uh, Vladimir Kramnik with white and this one of Anand with black. And in this position, uh, you see that white is threatening to uh, capture here, and uh, that's a discovered check. But it's uh, black's move, and Anand made the wonderful move here to f3 and we see now that uh, white has no defense uh, the threat is simply rook to h1 and if bishop takes then we can take, can take with the queen of the rook uh, Kremlin tried uh, c takes b7 check but after king f5 again there's no defense uh, and Kremlin actually resigned here Mm, well, uh, let's just make a queen to uh, show the direct threat, which is this. Bishop has to take, and then rook take. Sorry, uh, rook takes is the cleanest version, in my opinion. Uh, and also, if the obvious bishop takes f3, doesn't really make a difference. Still the threat, rook h1. And uh, remarkably, uh, white doesn't even have a check. So, uh, again, if you make a queen, just rook h1 mate. So, I was uh, intrigued by this idea from Anand, and uh, I went on and found other examples. Uh, what is this? Okay. Uh. Michael Gurevich. Uh, Gurevich with black. And okay, we saw our basic theme in the last game. And already from this position, it's almost possible to uh, calculate the theme. Gurevich uh, played here h takes g3. Uh, White played h takes, which is probably not the best move because after rook b6, uh, the sequence becomes pretty much forced. Bishop has to retreat. Uh, it's probably best to put it on g2 to defend. Then we have bishop to b3. We're simply attacking the rook. Uh, the rook has to uh, move away. We double. And actually it's it's quite difficult to find a move right here. Uh, white tried a4, but then queen f6. 
And now we see the uh, the idea again. White played queen a3, attacking the bishop. But uh, Gurovic simply uh, ignored it, and he played queen f3, just like Anand did. And you can even allow this this one check here, and then king g8. And it's the same uh, same idea and same situation. The threat is rook h1. And if we take, uh, there's no defense against rook to h1. Next move. Uh, no checks, uh, no way to interpose in the h file, so it doesn't matter what white does here, uh, it's checkmate. I think I have uh, another example here. And this is uh, David Norwood against Christian Meyer. And actually, here the uh, Black forces are somehow so uh, disconnected with the king's side because of this pawn structure. Uh, this bishop is closed out, and uh, these pieces can't really defend on the king's side. So here we have almost an extreme version of this uh, theme, where white could play queen f6 immediately. If black takes, we simply take and. There's no defense uh, against the threat of rook h2 to h8 mate. Only uh, defense is this, but of course we have one apiece here, so. And with it, the game. After queen f6, uh, black tried rook a to b8. <laughs> White actually here went knight to d1. Eliminating the idea of uh, queen takes b2. And even after this, white simply, uh, sorry, black simply uh, resigned. He has no defense against this, against this threat. Uh, I think I have an example from uh, Sweeler, no? Okay, here we have another example. And here uh, we have sort of uh, a built up 94. And here, knight c4 looks like a normal move. But already it might be the losing move because of bishop takes c4. Knight takes c4. Rook d2 h2. And I'm sure by now you, you see uh, what white's threat is. Black didn't notice it. He played knight takes e3. And probably his idea was uh, after queen takes e3. He's gonna play king f8. Try to escape with the king, perhaps to e7 or something. But of course, well, you already know and already gave it away. Queen f6, of course. The pattern once again. And again, no defense. There's mates on h8. Next move. Well, we can play bishop h3 to postpone it one move, but it's made anyway, and black played d5. And checkmate. Uh, well, now it's on to another mate, and that's mate pattern number five. I call that Bacros mate. It's uh, queen f7 closing down the king plus h file mate. Uh, what do I mean? Well, this is a position from the game uh, Etienne Pacro with white against Luis Gallego, a Portuguese grandmaster, a good friend of mine who has been to Iceland many times. And here uh, Pacro finished him off very nicely. He played knight to e6. Pawn takes e6, rook h8 check. This has to be captured uh, if you go king g7. And rook h7, and eventually you have to take the rook. So rook takes, queen f7. So this is our uh, basic pattern. The queen on f7, looking good, but the king on h8, not looking so good because all these squares are blocked by the queen. And next we just play rook h1. 
which is checkmate. So here, my friend Kaleko, he had to resign. Let's see some more examples of this. Uh, here we have a position from a uh, uh, youth tournament in Germany. Some uh, under 18 guys. And black played here, bishop e7. But that allowed white to set up this mating pattern with rook takes h7, king takes queen f7. The king has to retreat to the corner. Uh, and then we have uh, sexy time on the eighth file. Rook eight one. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, this is a mating pattern, but uh, sometimes knowing the mating mating pattern can uh, be helpful uh, in just material gains. And here, uh, uh, the white player, uh, this is from an amateur game, both players are around 2000, uh, but white player here, rook h8, king takes, queen takes f7, and of course we're threatening uh, rook h1 mate, so there's only one defense, knight to g8. So white had to anticipate that, of course, because it's down the rook. So knight f5. Now we're hitting the queen. Threatening made on g7. Queen d7 is the only move. Then we have rook to h1. Knight h6 has to be played. We take the knight. Queen takes, knight takes. Check, discard, check. King has to move. And knight takes d8. And what's the result of all of this? Uh, white has won a pawn. <laughs> it's not enough, but sometimes and usually it's enough to win a game. And that's indeed what happened here. So from our starting position, uh, probably knowing this pattern, or or maybe just uh, stumbling up on it in the game, but I would like to think that he knew the pattern. Uh, he was able to find this idea that uh, in the end one him a pawn, the f7 pawn. Uh, and here we win the rook back, so we're up a pawn. I think that was the last example of that theme. No, actually not. Here we have. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, that's a new theme. <laughs> I even forgot to uh, put a name on it. Oh my! So, uh, that would actually be mate pattern number six. So, I, I had mate pattern number six as uh, Kramnik's mate, but now we have to uh, adjust uh, insert slide. Uh, sorry about that. Mate pattern number six. I don't know what to call that. Uh, it's a uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's just call it Stellwagen for the moment. Stellwagen mate. So I have to change my pattern number six to number seven. So mate pattern six. Still like a mate. No, that's not nice. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Okay, for a lack of a better alternative, we'll uh, call it Stellwagen Mate Romano. So this first game is between uh, Rock Tim Pantio uh, against Daniel Stellwagen. And this, uh, well, okay. Pawn takes d3, pawn takes e4. Uh, opening up the diagonal for the bishop. 
and after the queen takes e4, bishop d4 check. And I don't think that uh, Mr. Bandiopatai noticed black's threat, which is our mating pattern, rook to h2. Uh, king takes and queen to h7 check actually he resigned at the rook h2 but here we have it queen h3 so the pattern is queen giving a check to a king on g2 supported by this pawn and this bishop here and as you can see the pawn takes care of this square, the bishop takes care of uh, this diagonal, and the queen takes care of the rest of the squares. So, this is the basic mating pattern, but knowing that pattern, uh, Mr. Stellwagen was able to play confidently from here with h takes g3 and this e4 sacrifice. Bishop d4. And he finished off nicely here with rook h2. Followed by this. Okay, I think I have uh, definitely more examples of this. Uh, here we see white uh, setting it up rather nicely. Uh, it's difficult to get the queen to the h file at the moment, so. White played here, bishop d4 check. Bishop takes, queen takes check. This has to be played, and now a nice move, knight to f5. Now notice if pawn takes, then rook takes h7. This is a basic threat now. He has to move and checkmate. So he went knight e5 here. White took. Rook took an f4. And now white played queen c3. Uh, actually, setting up our familiar pattern. Uh, black played here, queen to a7. Maybe he thought that he could uh, keep check on f2. And that threat would uh, allow him to take on next move at g7 of the queen, trying to defend. But, of course, not so. Rook takes h7. King takes, queen h3 check. King has to take, and here we have our checkmate. So, I'm pretty much uh, showing the build up, more or less. Well, this is a position from a uh, Spanish championship for girls under 12 years old. And kudos for uh, Miss Nakane for finding the forced mate here of rook takes h7. Rook takes, rook takes, king takes, queen h2 check, king g7, and king, queen h6 checkmate. A nice pattern to know, don't you think? But now we come to mate pattern number seven. And I call that Kremlik's mate. Uh, it's basically a knight, f, knight on f6. Uh, from white's perspective, uh, of course, if we measure it, it's knight to on f3 for black. Or on c3. Uh, but it's basically a knight on f6 teaming up with uh, rook to mate on g8 or h7. So this is perhaps our basic position. Uh, this knight here is really strong. It controls these two squares, from which if we put a rock on it, it's basically checkmate. And this is a fabricated position. Uh, black has a, ma has a material edge, but you can't do anything to stop the mate on h7. Uh, for instance, rook takes a2, e2, simply rook g8 checkmate. Nothing that can be done against this threat, so 
this is the basic uh, end position of this mating pattern, but the positions I've gathered are much more complicated. Uh, most of them. Here, uh, the very strong Polish Grandmaster uh, Mikhail Krasenkov is white. And here we have found a crossing blow using our pattern knight to f6. Very nice move. The threat is rather simple. Rook takes h7. Queen takes, queen takes, checkmate. Uh, he tried rook to uh, takes h3. But simply queen to g8. Rook takes and rook takes. I'd like to mention, of course, in the starting position that uh, queen takes allows this mate and rook takes allows this mate. But uh, it's basically the knowledge of this uh, tandem of the knight and rooks that allowed him to find this move and follow up, followed up with this mate. Here it's white to move, uh, it's equal material, but again, knowing uh, about this uh, powerful battery white plate here, rook to f7. Black took on c3, pawn takes. And here, uh, well, probably uh, black can't defend. But he played here bishop to c5, attacking with rook. And that, of course, allowed knight to f6. And it turns out that even with even, one, even material, uh, black has no defense against rook h7 mate. He played here rook f8. Uh, probably sort of as a joke, but of course rook h7 mate. Uh, here we have a position from uh, where uh, Joe Gallagher, Grandmaster English, Grandmaster living in Swiss, so actually playing for Swiss, has the white pieces and actually white threat is so powerful that he doesn't even need this uh, rook on a7. And white play here, queen to h6. The threat is queen takes h7, eight. And there not, there's nothing to be done because if bishop takes h6, then simply rook takes h7 using this powerful combination of the uh, knight and the rook. And now we move on to a slightly more complicated example. And this is from my game. Uh, I was right against Interma International Master Kettleson. Uh, this is from many years ago, and actually, probably the first time I beat an international master in a tournament game. Uh, actually, this is not from the game, this is uh, a missed opportunity, but nonetheless, I won a very nice attacking game. Uh, could have played rook g3 uh, one more ago. Uh, and that would have set up this position where it's need to play. And I would have had the beautiful finish. Queen takes h6 check. And hopefully you see uh, how this applies to our uh, idea. Knight takes f7. Rook has to take and then rook to g8 checkmate. The powerful combination of the knight and the rook succeeds once more. Now, I believe this is our last example, and this is from a famous game between Boris Gelfand with white and Vladimir Kramnik with black. So this is why I choose to call it uh, Kramnik's mate. White's last move was knight on f3 takes pawn on d4. And actually there's only one way for black to win here, and it's rook takes b2. Of course, if white takes the queen, and we finish up this 
this battery here, but what happens if what this B2? Do we play Rook takes B2? No. Kremlin found the beautiful Queen to A2. Kevin resigned because he has to take it and then Rook to B1. Checkmate. So this was mating pattern number 7. Kremlin's mate. Uh, so what do we have more here today? We have endgame pattern number one. Uh, it's the philodel position, uh, plus some thoughts on, on the difference between uh, G and F pawns in such endings. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Okay, actually, I had one more example here of uh, Kremlin's mate. Yeah, oopsie daisy. So basically we have this position. Uh, white is up a rook, but it seems like uh, black is about to win the rook back. Because he's attacking a queen and the rook. But here Grandmaster Rosenthal has found knight f6. King h8, bishop takes g7, queen takes and queen takes f5. When white remains up a rook and indeed well, black sort of resigned with rook takes f5 because rook e8 check and our powerful comp combination wins once again. Uh, well, actually, he played queen g8, but okay. He can play queen f8 and avoid the mate, but he wanted to be mate, so actually, <laughs> this is a bad example. But, but anyway, this uh, combination of queen and rook was what. A lot white uh, to escape with a material advantage here. But of course this isn't really our mating pattern because after queen f8 there's no uh, mate. But anywho. Uh, and here's one last example. I forgot I had two more. Uh, and this is from uh, Vilaskas Cordoba against Knights of Short. Knight f6, setting up the powerful threat of rook 8 7 8. Knight should try to block it, but Velasquez played queen takes e6. Allowing black to queen because our mating pattern is so powerful that even here, up a queen for only a knight, black has absolutely no defense. And, uh, Short played here h6, sorry b6, and allowed the mate. Uh, okay, I think that was the last one. Yes, <laughs> I had many examples of many examples of this knight f6 stuff. So uh, I set up here a uh, standard endgame position. Uh, we somehow tend to neglect stopping the endgame. Well, I'm sure that many of you have seen this position before, of course, but this is to demonstrate uh, the correct defense or black in such positions. And that is to keep the rook on the 6th against the pawn on the 5th. So it's white's move here. Uh, well, what can he try? Uh, he can try some checks, but we simply move our king. So eventually, uh, White has to try f6. Let's just uh, move around a little bit. If White does nothing, we keep our rook on the sixth. That's the basic idea. And the idea is to not let the king uh, approach. Rook b7. Uh, we just keep the rook on the sixth. And eventually, when white loses patience and goes f6, we move the rook down to the first rank to get checks. Uh, if the king tries to approach, 
the MacTex. And there's nothing I can do. There's no shelter for the king. Uh, just go there, we attack the pawn. He has to come back and we keep checking, etc. And if he tries to uh, come uh, our way, this way, well, we simply attack the pawn again. And he can't really do anything. So we goes down, and uh, making some checks doesn't help white here. Simply move the king, and there's no progress to be made. So this is Philidor's uh, position, uh, whichever chess players know. There's one more thing I'd like to add, after f6. Uh, we can't defend like this. Because after this, uh, if we try to keep defending, of course, if the work comes here, then work b8 is made. So we have to try to uh, defend here on the 8th rank, but why does this check here? And it doesn't matter if we go rook h8, uh, king f8 or king h8. Let's look at king h8 first. And we make this check, king g8, f7 check, and we are winning by force here. This is also a good uh, idea to know if you're pressing for the win with a pawn. Uh, same thing applies if king f8. And we have the threat here of rook to h8 mate. King g8, and we have the same position, f7. And winning the rook. So, this is a good idea to know. Uh, because actually, uh, when we have a g pawn, like here, then a defense on the 8th rank is also a possibility. Right now we have the filter position, so we can defend like that, simply doing nothing. After g6, it's the same as before, we make checks uh, down here. If the king tries to approach with mating ideas, just check. And as, as you can see, uh, there's no shelter for the king. He can't uh, hide behind the pawn, and this rook is not helping in, uh, in blocking checks. And if the king runs away, like before, then we simply attack the pawn and win it if he does nothing. Otherwise, we keep checking. But uh, my idea with this uh, endgame pattern, along with the filter position, was to demonstrate uh, the A threat defense with a G pawn and to show also that it doesn't work with an F pawn. So, actually, here after G6, we can actually play rook B8 here. And it draws as well. So this is good to know because uh, aside from uh, a rook spawn on the 8th file or the 8th file, a knight spawn on uh, g file or b file is absolutely uh, and endlessly easily drawn for the defending side. And if we try to win in similar fashion as before, say king f6. Well, there's simply no progress to be made uh, because we don't have f7 here. If we move the pawn, the rook falls, so we can't really do anything here. Uh, well, the rook goes back. Oops. And we simply move on the 8th. And nothing is happening. And even as soon as he moves this pawn, we can even get fancy here, uh, with this move here with g6, because this is stalemate, and if it doesn't take, then we take the pawn. So there's absolutely no progress to be made here. Try something like something like this. It doesn't matter because we win this pawn. So uh, 
cheap one is easily drawn. I think we demonstrated some some ideas here and how to defend them. But of course, like I said, uh, holding the filter position is probably easiest. Keep the rook on the sixth as soon as the pawn moves. We go down to make checks. Uh, and with the cheap one, we can defend the eighth. And we have no problems. And also this. It's nice to know these fancy tricks, you know. To show off to the crowd, isn't it? <laughs> so, okay, today we had uh, four mating patterns and uh, one endgame pattern. And we'll continue to add more patterns in the future. But this is all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this. So, I'll see you later. Bye bye.